<laughs> yes, he is. He is a guy that's on right on time. Children, we thank you. We thank you for just being. We thank you for being. We thank God for allowing you to be. And we just thank God for. We thank God for man and God who's going to bring us the word this morning. Pastor Graves and his wife, they're all from, they're all from ministry with um, with one of their, with a fellow laborer yeah. in, the, in the vineyard. And um, we just ask God to continue to continue to bless them. Yeah. And we know he's gonna he's gonna do a, a wonderful job. Amen. Because he's a God that can only do a wonderful job. Amen. Yeah. Right now we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, get with, move forward in our service with uh, hymn number 420. Hymn number 420. Lift him up. Oh, 
God, but we thank God for that. And, um, you know, I, 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 I stumbled across uh, over some of the words in verse 3. And I want to go back and reread it and make sure we understand, because that's a very, very, very serious and a very important thing. It says, don't exalt the preacher. Don't exalt the pew. Preach the gospel simple, full, and free. Prove him, and you will find that promise is true, that I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. Amen. Too many times people get, get sidetracked looking at the preacher, looking at the big church, looking at everything else except for God. The preacher is charged and challenged to preach the gospel simple, full, and free. That should be the highlight. Everything else, everything else around the church, that's fluff. The gospel, the unadulterated gospel, the word of God, is the key, the anchor that holds our faith. Yeah. At this time, we're going to have our announcements for you. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Maintain a godly focus. Welcome to our visiting friends. We trust that you have been blessed being in our presence. We are happy to have you with us. The year has changed. The pandemic is still here. Vaccines are available. Remember, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Psalms 24.1. Trust in him, depend on him, rely on him. Pastor James N. Graves. Our thought for today. There is a mighty battle going on for control of your mind. Heaven and earth intersect in your mind. The tugs of both fears influence your thinking. I created you with the capacity to experience four tastes of heaven. When you shut out the world and focus on my presence, you can enjoy sitting with me in heavenly realms. This is an incredible privilege reserved for precious ones who belong to me and seek my face. Your greatest strength is your desire to spend time communion, communing with me. As you concentrate on me, my spirit fills your mind with life and peace. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, 6. Let us read our key theme and verse for 2021 together. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Don't work backwards. Sunday, September 19th, 11 a.m. morning's worship, Reverend David Kaysan will be with us. Sunday, September 26th, 11 a.m. morning's worship. Sunday, October 3rd will be our Women's Day, 8 a.m. Women's Prayer Fellowship, 11 a.m. morning's worship, Reverend Thelma Anderson will be with us. And Sunday, October 10th, at 8 a.m. is our PDM meeting, 11 a.m. is our morning worship and Holy Communion following morning's worship. Building faith, family, and fellowship on the principles and promises of God's word. Amen. May God add a blessing. Amen. 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 We thank God. We thank God for the announcements. And one, one other announcement. Yes, that you put your sweet babies on vibrate, turn them off, so, so.
so that we, we're not interrupting the word of God as, God as God shares with us. And at this time, we, we had our, our point, our, the point in our service where we go to the, go to the throne of grace for the, the sick and shutting, for those that, those that cannot be here, even those who do not even know to call them. Baptist 
Lord's Lord. Come in if you don't stay long. Father, somebody needs you for one thing, and somebody needs you for another. But Father, I need you to be my all in all. Father, we can't do nothing without you, dear God. Will you come on and see about us today? Yes, we ask that you bless the deacons, dear God. Yes. Bless Deacon O'Brien as he uh, is away from here this morning. Yes. We ask that you bless him and his wife. Be a fence around them and shield them from seeing and unseen. Yes. Yes. We ask that you remember those that are on the prayer list. Yes. Yes. We are unable to call them name by name, but Father, just remember those that are on the prayer list. Yeah. Remember our church. Remember sanctuary this morning. Yes, Father, stop by there, dear God, if you don't stay. Yes, yes, Father, we ask that you touch, just deliver and set free. Yes. Bless all of those that I'm duty bound to pray for this morning, oh God. And Heavenly Father, when we prayed our last prayer down here, we can't pray no more. We ask you to give us a home in heaven. For we can praise your name in a better world than this. These and all the blessings we ask in your name and your son. For Christ's sake, amen. 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 At this time, we come to me and we're at our point where we uh, ask you to turn with us to Luke 21. And we we for our offertorial our offertorial sir uh, message. We're looking we're gonna read from the New Living Translation. It says, while Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts into the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, this poor widow has given more than all the rest of them. But they have given a tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. That's the way God, that's the way God wants us to wants us to give with a glad heart. Not trying to give him what's left over. Because if you try to give him what's left over, he can make that left over not be. But he said she gave all that she had. And she gave more. Because she gave of herself. She gave of her substance, and she gave with a glad. God wants us to have a glad, loving heart. And sometimes it's not only finances. You know, Pastor Graves is all assisting in ministry with a co-labor in the. Going through some, some situations, and God is sharing His bounty. He's sharing His bounty to 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 be a blessing to Him. And in the same vein, as Pastor Graves is away doing God's ministry, well, He didn't want to leave us in the end. Pastor Graves was willing to be a vessel and share that which God had given him. And God's given us a great man of God to come and speak. And, and his, his congregation at Sanctuary has blessed us with allowing him to come and share with us and continue to feed the flock. God's got a flock that goes all around the world. It's not just one congregation, but it's all around the world. Today, we have Pastor David K. Sanders coming to us from
from Sanctuary of the Sanctuary Baptist Church is going to come and share with us the Word of God. We ask you to open your ears, open your heart, and be receptive. Be willing to hear so that you can be doers of the Word also. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall of the flesh reap 
corruption. But he that saw it in the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. May the Lord Amen. have a blessing Amen. to the reading and the hearers of his word. Amen. My talk for today is the importance of staying in courage. Mm -hmm. The importance of staying in courage. Yeah. As we go around this world day after day, night after night, year after year. It's someone always talking about you. Whether it's good or bad, somebody is talking about you. But I stopped by this morning to tell you to stay encouraged. Stay encouraged. The importance of staying encouraged. Stay encouraged because somebody is out there trying to discourage you. Telling you you can't do this and you can't do that. But I want you to stay encouraged. As we stop by this morning to leave this message with you, one of Satan's cheapest weapons against the saints of God is disencouragement. Disencouragement here will stop us from receiving the blessing when we're only a few minutes or a few days or hand reach away from it. Whatever God has promised for us. We got to watch it when God is providing for us. Maybe having the Giving us what we want right now. For James said, we have not because we ask not. And then we ask of this and that. We might consume upon the looks. See, God can be blessing us. But we can see somebody else whom we think is being blessed better than we are. Yes. And then we get angry. Well. Driving around in that little Ford or Chevy and nothing's wrong with it. But we think that uh, we see somebody else driving a Mercedes Benz or Bentley. Well. That God uh, ought to be blessing us like that. Yeah. And then we start to reject in what uh, God has blessed us with. God, God has blessed us with a nice house yeah. in a nice neighborhood. But somebody else has got that big mansion out there in the country. Uh, well. All fixed in. Well, well. Then we get mad with God because we know we are living better than that person mm. is living. But they are more blessed. We think that they are more blessed than we are. Mm -hmm. And just because the car is more fast, uh -huh. the house is bigger, yeah. it doesn't mean that we are more blessed mm -hmm. or they are more blessed. Sometimes the car may be fast uh -huh. and the house may be bigger, yeah. but 
They can't pay the notes. But yet God has blessed us. We, God has blessed us that what we have is really ours. We don't need no help. It's ours. And it's not giving us any trouble. But I want you to be careful when you complain about God's provision. We need to thank God for how he will provide it. They spoke here as we read. Uh, they spoke against God and they spoke against Moses and then they spoke against God's material provision. We got to watch it when we get so locked into the gospel of prosperity. Yeah. Until we end up doing just what the word of God says, despise not. That they are small things. We have a lot of people today that are trying to find that big mansion and they are not keeping that little three room apartment clean. Yes. We got to show God that we appreciate what He has already done. And we won't want Him to do more. The results of uh, Him becoming discouraged. They said things they had no business saying. The Bible said, the Lord sent fiery serpent mm -hmm. among the people. Jesus. And they bit the people. And the people of Israel died. Mm -hmm. Y'all just pray with me for ahead. a few minutes. They were God people. But they got on the wrong side of God. Mm -hmm. Because of their disincurred. Mm -hmm. They said the wrong thing. But look, let us look here at someone in the Bible who, uh, who would not let himself get discouraged. As we read in 1 Samuel and Isaiah 41 and 7, it talks about the carpenter mm -hmm. encouraging the goldsmith. And it talks about the different people and the different occupations encouraging one another. In the house of God, we all should be encouraged. Mm -hmm. We should be encouraging one another. Mm -hmm. We should be saying things about one another. We should be encouraging one another. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't understand what had happened today in the body of Christ. The people get so disencouraged by people who ought to be encouraging them. Then we think about David here. David came into a situation where he had to learn how to encourage himself. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1, and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And David had been under the protective custody of the apex who was the king of the Philistines. David had been there for 16 months, one year, four months. Why? Because he was running from his own King Saul, who was trying to take his life. And he became a part of Apex, the Philistine, the king's army. But when it was time to fight Saul, some of the apex generals said, don't take David on this exhibition. Yeah. Why? Because 
he might use it as an excuse to get in good order with the fellowship, with the fellow Saul. Uh, so the king of the Philistines here sent David back to the city, which he had given him, which was the city of Ziglag. Now it was three days' journey. David and 600 men with him. And after they had traveled for three days to get back to Ziglag, they found the city itself had been burned with fire. And that their wives and their families had been kidnapped along with their goods. But such is the nature here of the people. They always got to find someone to blame. Whether you're doing good or bad, they got to find someone to blame. Yes. So they wanted to blame David here. Now the real person who ought to have been blamed is Saul. Because God had positioned Saul to wipe out, to extend, to commit genocide, to kill all the Amalekites. And Saul did not obey God. Had Saul obeyed God, there would be no Amalekites. No Amalekites to deal with at all. But when they got back there, they found that the Amalekites had burned their city, kidnapped their families, and the men started weeping and crying. And the Bible said until they had no more power to weep. So when they raised up, the first thing they do is look at David. Got the blame for David. And David said to him, you are, they said to David that you are the blame. And, and uh, for this, we're talking about stoning David. Here they are. A man who is leading them and carrying the place, they are talking about stoning. But I want you to know it's bad. It's disencouraging when people you are leading or talking about stoning you. But David decided, I know what discouragement does. I know what it is to lose hearts. He, David said to you, he said, I've been in battle before. David said, I've been before a lion and a bear and had nothing in my hand. Nothing in my hand. I stood before the Philistine giant, and all I had was a slingshot. So I'm not going to get discouraged over what's going on now. So the Bible said, while they were talking about stoning David, he encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. Well, how do you encourage yourself. When you think about what God has done for you. But if He haven't done anything for you, you really don't have anything to base it on. But when you know how He brought you through, when you know how He saved you, when you had the cake happen, you want to break that tobacco hat. You want to break that liquor hat. You want to break that homosexuality hat. But you didn't have the power to do it. But God brought you out. We can say thank you, God. Thank you. You brought us out. Thank you. And then you remember that when your finances was gone, mm -hmm. your money 
was gone. Yes. Your bills was due. Mm -hmm. And somehow he opened the doors yes. and made a way yes. for you. Yes. When you think about what he had done for you, yes. you can say thank you, God. Thank thank you. God. David said, uh, I'm not going to get discouraged. Because if I become discouraged, I will become a coward. If I become discouraged, I will never lay hold on the promise. <clears throat> Samuel anointed me to be king over Israel. Yes, yes. And I'm still running from the rejected King Saul. Mm -hmm. But I got a promise today. That I'm not going to sit on that throne. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get discouraged. Mm -hmm. But if I get discouraged, I will never reach the throne. Mm -hmm. I stop by the table to stay encouraged. Yes. Yes. If you're ever going to lay hold on your position, you got to stay encouraged. Mm -hmm. David decided I'm not going to lose courage. Uh -huh. He called for the priests. Yeah. He said, I want you to bring me to eat now. I want to talk to you. But I don't want to talk to you as a man. I want to uh, put on the holy gun. Yes. I want to inquire of the Lord. And I'm going to ask him, must I pursue? Must I pursue after the Amalekites? And the Lord said to David, said, pursue. He said, will I prevail? The Lord said, surely you will prevail. You will not only get some of your stuff back, but you are going to to recover with all. See, when you're discouraged, you'll mess up. I stop by to tell you to stay encouraged. I want you to know that we can go through some rough places. Old folks know that. They said, must I be careful to the sky on flowery beds of evil. Yeah. While others about to win the prize and sail through bloody sea. Yeah. No, I must fight if I would rain. See, so many folks today think church is supposed to be a nursery home. Yeah. But I stop by the tank and the church is no nursery home. Yeah. The church is a battlefield. Yes. Yes. It's no nursery home. Yes. Yes. So I, yes. I want you to know that don't lose courage. Yes. Back in the day we used to sing a song, I'm encouraged to walk with Jesus. Yeah. Yes, I've been through some trials and tribulation, persecution, but I'll be faithful. I want you to know today to be encouraged. Uh, I don't know today what you're going through. But I want you to be courageous. But if you come discouraged, find a way to be encouraged. The scripture will keep you encouraged. When the enemy come at you like a flood, Yes. You got God's promise mm -hmm. that the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against you. Mm -hmm. When the enemies uh, come at you with their glittering swords and come after you, you got the word of God that says, No weapon, mm -hmm. no weapon yes. formed against me shall sure prosper. Yes. And every tongue that comes up against me in judgment shall be 
for thee. Yes, yes. If you keep the word, yes. keep it hidden in your heart, yes. you will be in good. I don't know what you're going through today, church. Mm -hmm. And right now, you're down in the valley. Mm -hmm. The valley of this incur. Mm -hmm. But God wants you to be incur. Yeah. I want you to go back home today, church. I want you to go back home and change your house. Yeah. I want you to go back to work that I'm determined I'm going to hang on in there yes. until God delivers. Yes, yes. I want you to forget about the sickness in your body today yes. and say I'm encouraged the Lord, the God I serve, yes. He is a heal. Yes, yes. And I want you to thank, thank you for those people that are still moving forward in the same spirit. Yes. yes. This encouraging situation. Uh -huh. I know you're able right now, Lord. Uh -huh. I want to, to send this message out today to Deacon Graves today. Uh -huh who is laying on a bed of affliction. That body is all wrapped with pain. I want him to just look to the hills from which come step. Because they come from the Lord. These sick and afflicted and diseased bodies, Lord, do it right now. We've been looking down. We have just pleased. But let us look, lift up our heads and know that you are God and that you can correct any situation. Yes, yes, yes. Satan, God rebuke you right now. Yes. Satan, we command you, take your hands off of God, thy people. Yes. Take your hands off of these situations. Yeah. Women of God believe yes, you. Men of God be set free. Yes, Lift up your hands and say thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just say thank you Jesus thank you. for all thank you. that you've done for me. Yeah. Thank you for your encouragement. Yeah. Keep on looking to the hill from which cometh your help. Yes. Here we look here, the writer said that Jesus had to reach way down. He will pick you up. Yeah. I stop by the chain to stay in courage. The Bible said in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Yeah. Stay in courage today. The Bible said in Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. I've stopped by. I want you to know to stay in courage. I may not see Deacon Graves right now, but I want somebody, when you see him, to tell him to stay in in cook. Yes. Yes. The Bible says in Isaiah 54 and 17, yes. no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper. Mm -hmm. And every tongue that rises against them in judgment shall be condemned. Tell them today to stay in cook. Yes. And last but not least, the Bible says in Matthew 16 and 18, mm -hmm. and I say all so unto thee, that thou art be upon this rock. I will build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against you. Church, I just want to tell you to stay in courage. Yes. Keep looking up. Stop looking back. Keep looking forward. Yesterday is gone. 
And tomorrow is still yeah. before us. Yeah. Keep looking yeah. forward. Yeah. Stay encouraged. Yeah. God yeah. wants us to go down on our knees yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. He wants us to go down and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. Yeah. No other help I know. Yeah. If thou would draw the sinner of thee. Oh, brother, shall I go? Yes. Just stay encouraged today. Keep looking to the heat from which coming by him. Amen. This is the message I leave with you today. The importance of staying encouraged. You tell Brother Graves, or Deacon Graves, and I said, stay in good. Stay in good. Only God. Only God can do that. The doctors can describe all kinds of medicine. Yes. When God does it, yes. He is the only one that can do Anyone. That is discouraging me today. I leave this message with you. Stay in good. God is only on the way. Yes. Yes. All you got to do is call. I don't know about you, but I know He is a God answer. He will answer the prayer. Yes, Lord. No matter what time of day and night it is. Yes, yes. If you call on the name of the Lord, He will answer. Yes. I hope that you got something out of this message. Yes, yes. That will encourage you. That will give you peace in the midst of the storm. We don't know. You might be in the storm. But I hope it's encouraging. Give me peace in the midst As we are standing, we ask the church will stand. We extend an invitation to open the doors of the church. Maybe there's someone today, someone that wants to give the life to Tell the Lord I. Been living in sin too long. I've been running in a hide. I want to give my life over to you. Is there one today? Would you come? Maybe there's one that, that want to come as candidate for baptism. Maybe there's one that's a good Bible-based church where they're preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is there one today? God is calling the young as well as the old. Yes. yes. When you walk out in the cemetery, you see just as many small graves as you yes, can get. Yes. God is calling today. Would you come? Maybe there's one that's standing near. Maybe there's one.
the situation. You know, whatever the problems may be, follow let them know that you are the problem of sin. Yes, Most gracious, all wise, and everlasting God, our Lord, is once more and again that we come before you boldly at the throne of God. We come before God asking that, that thou would touch these, thy people, yes, who are standing in this circle. Father, we don't know what they stand in need of. And we are not asking what they stand in need of. Yes, but you know, dear God. Yes, Lord. You said in your word, if my people who are called yes, by my name, yes, Lord. would all of themselves yes, 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 yes. seek thou faith and yes. turn from their wicked ways, yes. then when we hear from them, you will forgive us of our sin and you will heal from we ask that you touch them, oh God. Touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Father, may this sickness in their bodies, we don't know. We ask that you would heal, deliver, and set them. Maybe somebody is in a financial problem. Yes, Father, we don't know. Yes, Lord. But Father, we know that you have a thousand cattle out on our head. And they all belong to you. Yes, yes. Father, we know that you are able to deliver. Yes, Lord. Father, you said to ask, and it shall be given. You said to knock, and the door shall be opened. You said to seek, and we shall find. And Father, we are down here, we're knocking, we're seeking, and we are asking, oh God. Yes. Maybe somebody, child, had gone astray, oh yes. God. We don't know. But we ask that you would turn the situations around, oh God, yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. We ask that you would touch me and deliver and set me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Right there with us. Yes. We're, we're brothers. 
brothers in Christ also. Amen. I just thank you, praise God, for each and every one of you today. Thank you for all being here. I don't know why you have anything she wants to say to you. My sister. When we do, we enjoy what we see. Yes. Amen. Amen. We thank you, praise God. Do you hear any more announcements or anything? No, we'll get at the first benediction go. Take care of all of you. Amen. With all hearts and minds are clear, we stand in the Lord. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Rest rule and abide with us in fourth night of the morning. Let's all say amen. 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 amen.